Hi, it's me again, Pete from Eco Fires and Stoves. Um, today, I would like to just hit on a couple of little hints for you. Um, interesting things that customers come in asking us about and they go out feeling they, you know, it's such a simple answer to, to their questions. Um, so firstly, uh, customers come in and say, my glass has gone black, or what do I clean my glass with on the stove, you know, when it's cold and they, they want to clean it up. Um, what products do you have? And we kind of say, well, in, in most cases, don't go buying anything, don't go wasting your money, because it's very simple, really. I don't know if this shows on the camera at all, but this has got, a, it's darkened off the glass. This is where the air wash, the, the, the air coming down that we call the air wash hasn't cleaned the glass because it gets interrupted here. This is normal to find on just about every stove. Um, so when it's cold, that's what you're going to see, but people like to see it nice and clear. Any simple fluid for cleaning we use. It can be, it can be, a, it can be a, a glass cleaner if you wanted, but I tend to use, use a dead old surface cleaner because of the COVID thing. We've had a lot of this stuff lying about and I just used it once and it works perfectly, but there's, there's a way of doing it. All you do is you spray the glass and then a simple bit of kitchen towel, something like that. I just so happen to have some in my pocket. And then what you do, you start to wipe it, but then you dip it in the wood ash. You will not scratch the glass, it's ceramic glass, unless you bought yourself a cheap stove and it's got some, I won't mention what country they come from, um, but they tend to have really cheap glass on them and you can damage them. On most quality stoves, you'll have what's probably called a Scott Robex glass on it. It's ceramic glass and you're not gonna damage it by doing this. And the ash from the stove is the best thing to use. So you just dip it in the ash, it's obviously a little bit damp anyway. Wipe your glass off. As simple as that. You can see the uh, what's come off there. You can chuck that straight in the stove, as long as you haven't used methylated spirits to clean it. And you just use another bit just to dry it off. That's it, job done. That's all you have to do. Clean as you like, nice and clear. That's what people like to see. That's all you have to do to, to keep on top of these. So, while I've got my stove open, another question people ask is, I want to buy a tool set. They come in, they look at their, their what they call companion sets and what have you. They come in looking at this sort of thing. Um, that can range from anything from 60 to 500 pounds, depending on, you know, which type you want. Absolutely useless for a stove. They come in to buy them because they think they look nice ne sitting next to their stove. They're actually useless to use with the stove. All you need, all you need, here we go, is one of these. This is the example of the one we find the best. I think they're 30 odd pounds or 25 for the black one, 32 for the silver one, I think. But they're good for a reason. That fits in a stove easily and it's very square, so it gets into the corners. So when you're cleaning the ash out your stove, most of it can be done straight away with your little shovel. It's got right into the corner there. Try and do that without making a mess. Nice and easy. I'm not gonna take all the ash out because as you probably all know, it's best to leave a little bit of ash in the stove. But even the little brush you get, it's nice and square. If you did want to clean it right out, it gets in all the nooks and crannies, into the corners of your stove, where, where you want it to get to. Brush it up off the floor, chuck it in the stove, that's ready to go then. So, um, that, that is all done. So I'm just going to fill this stove up anyway because I need to light it for today um, in the normal way. My top down lighting, which I'm a big fan of, as you know. Um, so yeah, just want to talk about people that come in with concerns over fuel prices, which is um, obviously getting on, on, the, on the news every day. And obviously we do gas fires, we do electric, we do bioethanol. Um, you know, and people still like a gas fire and they're worried that it's going to be costing them a fortune to run. Don't worry, basically. It's still probably the cheapest um, appliance, this type of appliance to, to be running on a, on a daily basis, even with the gas prices like they are, um, because they're so efficient. So I'd still say, go for what you want, you know, what you think do the job best for you. And people want fires and stoves for different reasons. It's either for enjoyment, just because they like the look of them, or they do need them as a major part of their heating. But I think it's more important to think about the ethical side of things. 
you know, do you want something that burns fossil fuels or do you want something that burns renewable fuels, which obviously wood is, and bioethanol. Um, electric is considered one of the best things, but there's also a lot of questions to be answered about how we get hold of electricity as well. So, um, you know, you've got to make your own mind up. But I say really what I'm saying is don't worry too much about the cost of um, the fuel because it's, it's not like a boiler. It's not using it every day. It's something you use occasionally and it's more for fun than anything uh, and enjoyment and giving a warm feeling. So, yeah, I just thought I'd say that because when people come in, they, they think a little bit differently once I've spoken to them. Here you go, all loaded. Um, let's get this fire going for the day. I'm sure we'll get lots of people in today, nice and cold. These long matches are handy too. A lot of people like these. For obvious reasons, you don't burn your fingers when you're trying to light your stove. There you go. That fire lighter's good. Let's go. Just leave the door ajar for 10 minutes and that'll be going uh, good guns. Here we are, another one of our showroom stoves, uh, the ever popular Charmwood Island one. We've, I've done a little demo on this before. Um, so I'm not going to go through the stove uh, at this point, but I've got this little fan on top, um, which you might want to know about. You've probably seen them um, advertise. Uh, customers really like them. They do actually really work, uh, but most customers don't actually know how they work. So what it is, it's a fan that's driven by a little electric motor here. So it generates electricity with the heat from the stove. So this picks up the heat. These are cooling fans. And then between there, you've got what's called a thermoelectric generator. And that just drives enough electricity into this little motor to make this spin. So what that's actually doing, any warm air that's around the stove will get pushed forward. So it's a fan pushing air out, so it creates more of a draft for the warm air, or more air movement, should I say, which is really handy sometimes. If you've got a little bit of a squeezed in opening where the, the air movement isn't brilliant. But a good example of, why they, of, of, of proof that they work so well is people that have canal boats use them a lot because generally they've got a stove down one end, they're sitting up the other, and it pushes that air all the way down. So it's quite, quite a gentle sort of process, but it, they do really work. Um, so when you're using these for a heater and you want to try and get, get more air movement going out, they're great little things. And they're not expensive. This particular one is one of the, the premium models. It's under 60 pounds. So um, they're a great little thing to have. And men like them because they're a bit of a boy's toy as well. So, so it, that's just for today. A few things that I thought about talking about. Um, I'm sure I'll be coming up with more tips and stuff in the future. Um, so yeah, just please subscribe and then um, Every time I do this, you, you, you hopefully pick up some useful information. So thank you.